about to start. It's time to start caring again. And parents calling for an end to the cycle of violence. We're just looking for a better outcome. But tonight, there's hope and a path to success for the kids who need it the most. Police and activists are finding ways to stop the gunfire. And change is coming as our community comes together again for My Future, My Choice, the third Local 10 News Town Hall meeting. Live from Miami Norland Senior High School. Moderating tonight, Local 10's Laurie Jennings and Calvin Hughes. But first, here's the talented Wesley Ray. And oh, I just like the river I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too But I'm afraid to die Cause I don't know what's up there Beyond the skies It's been a long A long time coming But I know Change gonna come Oh, yes it will and we do want that change to come. Oh my gosh, you are so awesome. A student at Norland Middle School, little Wesley Ray here. Thank Good evening goodness. and welcome everyone. My name is Calvin Hughes. And I'm Lori Jennings. Thank you so much for being right here with us and joining us from home. It's a big night. Wesley, how long have you been singing? I've been singing since I was three years old. Oh, wow. it shows. You're great. <laughs> You're great. Thank you. And what a way to set a tone for our town hall meeting tonight. Mom and Dad, I think, are right over there, right? Yes, yes. yes. Let's give Mom and Dad a big round of applause. And Wesley, go ahead and join them, if you will. Thank you. Thank you so much. Boy, was he talented. Oh, my Fantastic. God. Yes. And change is coming. Change has happened, and that's why we bring you all together tonight. Welcome, everyone, to Miami Norland Senior High School. The, the motto here? Yeah. Excellence without excuses. Love it. This place dates back to 1958, but that was the old building. Yeah. You are sitting in a brand new, gorgeous building full of magnet programs and a wonderful example of change. Yeah, the home of the new Vikings, yes. if you will. That's right. Uh, <laughs> we hold this town hall to highlight all of the good that has come out of this community and all of the good that's going to come out of this community. The impact you're making is changing so many lives. But we are reminded that there's still so much to do. Just this past Wednesday, we were reporting about a 16-year-old boy shot in Miami. Thank goodness he's going to survive, but we don't want to see this happening. So many big changes have happened to help reduce crime and also to keep our kids safe. Let's take a look now with Local 10's Nikki Mohan. All units, all units, make it a 315, four people shot. They just start shooting up the car. It is a daily battle on the streets to save young lives. May 21st, 15-year-old Shanetta Gilbert sprayed with bullets as she sat in a car near Northwest 50th Street and Northwest 24th Avenue. Whoever know anything about my daughter being shot, to so please just come forward, please. Who be a Eight people were shot during the Martin Luther King Day celebrations this year. Just want it all to stop. Caught in the gunfire of rival gangs. It's shameful. The pleas for community participation and tips have unfortunately become a common occurrence. Our poorest communities are overtaken by drug enterprises who use money to lure in young people in need of cash. That including threats, robbery, and even murder. On May 9th, 14 people were taken into custody after a multi-agency task force raid at the South Gwen Cherry public housing development. Heed the warning and turn yourselves in. Miami-Dade director Juan Perez pleading with the community to do more. Those people that know that they're, they're causing this havoc in the community and they're not part of it, call us. And the overwhelming majority of the people that live there who would like to live there in peace. 
On that same day, peace of mind coming for those who are scared to come forward. Governor Rick Scott signing a witness protection bill that keeps the names of crime witnesses off public records. That's why I fought to put this in place to protect them, but also to give um, these families, these victims, the justice that they deserve. Yay! And in the middle of the chaos of the inner city, there is now Moonlight Way, a testament to the talent that lives on these streets and the potential in its residents. Moonlight, best picture. Oscar winners Barry Jenkins and Terrell Alvin McCraney welcome home with a big celebration, bringing large donations to the African Heritage Cultural Arts Center that nurtures children in the arts and provides a safe haven. I'm just, uh, you know, uh, an average brown boy from Liberty City uh, who works very hard. Uh, I hope it shows you that, that you can get to this place too. We'll have much more tonight on the changes that we still need to make as a community. But first, we want to highlight some of the successes. It is an honor to have with us uh, some special guests tonight, a group of them who have shown that uh, despite any struggle or hopelessness uh, that that can come our way, that these guys really can have moonlight. In fact, Oscar glory. Uh, we have tonight with us Tanisha Seidel, who plays a principal in the movie uh, Moonlight. And uh, she's also a teacher at New Orleans Middle. Also one of Seidel's real life students. You know the face, Jaden Piner. Jaden is one of the main stars. He plays a young Kevin. And Sharif Herb, one of the first people that you see in the movie Moonlight. Uh, he plays Terrence in the movie. Thank you all for joining us. And Terrence, uh, I really want to begin with you because your story is so remarkable and how you actually discovered the audition of the movie Moonlight, and uh, you were really in a really tough place in your life. You were recovering from some serious wounds that you suffered while in Little Haiti, and uh, and you bounced back by looking at a an audition, uh, you know, um, advertisement, and then just kind of take us from there. Yeah. Um, it was a pretty dark, rough time in my life, as you said. I was a victim of a violent crime, and acting and um, entertainment, all of these things always been a big part of my life and things that I always wanted to pursue. And it, it, it took me to get to that deep, dark place around that time to say, you know what, you only got one life to live, why not live your life chasing your dreams? So I went online, I said, the first thing I'm gonna see, I'm gonna go for it. And I seen um, the ad for Moonlight, it was right down the street. So I, I limped over there because I, I was a victim of some gunshot wounds. So I, I limped over there and I got the role. So, I mean, you had been shot three times, yes. Sharif, and you were in bed, laid up, mm -hmm. wondering where life was taking you, and exactly. then you see this ad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, was it, it like a God send? I believe so. I'm old fashioned. I still believe in God, so yeah. <laughs> that's not old fashioned. Yeah, that's not old fashioned. <laughs> that's, that's cool. I think a lot of people can agree with that. And uh, once you came over there, yeah. Barry had a reaction, and Terrell had a reaction to you that yeah. you told me. What was their reaction when you came over for the role? Well, um,. As soon as I left, the, I got the role instantly on the spot. I didn't even know this because as soon as I left, Barry, he closed the door and he was like, that's the one, that's the one. Him, wow. he's with God, we found him. And um, it, it, it made me real feel real special to know that um, they needed me for this role and I just wanted to do my best. And if it hadn't been right down the street in this neighborhood, you never would have made it there. No. And your life would have taken a different turn. Jaden, meantime, your life is much younger, but this has, how has this changed your life? Uh, I get more auditions, I get recognized just walking around. People are like, oh my gosh, that's the one from Moonlight. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but you know, just being in Moonlight is like big. Uh, just watching myself on the TV, I mean on the big screen, even though I don't like to, but still, yeah. just <laughs> seeing myself is wow. But you were headed down a different path. I mean, you were really into sports, correct? Yep. Before this came along. Mm -hmm. Now, Basketball. what's your future goal? Uh, just keep acting. Really? Mm -hmm. Really, Denzel? Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Does it make you feel good, though, Jaden, knowing what you've exposed your family to already? I mean, I don't think, did they ever expect to be on the red carpet at the Oscars? <laughs> no. <laughs> They'll probably expect it to, you know, be at one of my NBA games, you know, because that was, oh, you know, that was just, my just an NBA game. Yeah, just, that's, it, it, no, no big but deal. Then, <laughs> you know, acting just came in my life, and that was it. Well, you don't like confidence. So this we know. This is, this is great, and you need that on the big screen. Tanisha, you're amazing. I mean, in per we've done so many stories on you. You're a drama class. We'd all want to be in that drama class. The way you get these kids moving and to express themselves, you always tell your kids, 
anything can happen. Yeah. And it did. And it did. It did. Um, we were just blown away by that. We're blown, blown away by the whole process. But the fact that what you teach in the classroom, that anything you set your mind to, any goal, that, anything that you want to be, if you set your, set your mind right, you can do it. And it happened. And I'm so glad that it happened in this community. I'm so glad it happened in the Miami-Dade County Public Schools area. Um, it's just a testament to the arts and education program that is second to none here. Well, Ms. Seidel, it, it is one thing to say it to your students. Right. It's another thing to end up in an Oscar-winning movie and in L.A. at the Academy Awards, right. hanging out with the biggest stars on the planet, that's probably something you never even N dreamed. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, I take it as it came. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> um, but it, it was an amazing opportunity. And, um, you know, we seized it. And I, I think that's also another thing that we need to allow our kids to understand. If there's something that you want to do, yeah. don't allow any barrier to, to stop you from going after your goal. That do, is the lesson. Do you know deep down that you're reaching kids that could make a, a poor choice? Kids Absolutely. that could choose guns or violence, they're choosing your program? Absolutely. And I think um, if more parents and teachers would understand that as long as you share your heart with them, if you continue to speak life into them and love and say, listen, I see you, I know you, let's figure out what gift you have and cultivate it. As long as you can do that, they can they will understand that they can do anything and Sharif I see you shaking your head what do you have to say to add to what she just said well I believe that a lot of children have gifts but they don't have any means to cultivate it like she just said there's no programs or things a lot of these kids get into trouble out of just share a boredom I mean it's nothing to do you you look outside it's hopeless you know so just being able to have these programs or anything you see in a kid just push them Sharif, do you think you can reach some kids now in the position you're in? Yes, of course. That's all I want to do is just help the youth. And I applaud anybody out there that's pushing forward to, to help the youth because the most valuable thing that we have as a nation, as a people, are our youth. They're the future. Tanisha, how many more Jadens and Sharifs and Barry Jenkins and just a number of people who are in that mm -hmm. movie, how many more of those are in the pork and beans, um, in uh, Liberty City, Little right. Haiti? and Overtown and Alapata. Yeah, limitless, limitless. Again, if they understand that they can do anything, if you speak to them um, and constantly encourage them instead of tearing them down, uh, that is the key. They just need to know that there's hope. They need to know that they can do it. But where does that, that begin? At home? Where, where does it It begin? begins at home. Yeah. It begins in the neighborhoods. Yeah. It be, you know, when I was growing up, we would go outside and play. We had homework, and then we would go outside and play. That's and right. to, today, it's not like that. We don't have the neighborly, we don't always have the neighborly, um, for lack of a better word, relationships. Yeah, exactly. You know? Village. Correct. Sort of we need a village. And I think we need to, as a community, buy into that more. Um, and we won't have as many shootings. We won't have as, as many, you know, people, he says that they're bored. And that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Let's create programs. Let's put them in the programs and do something for them. Are you and your husband now going to be able to take this program to other communities? Exactly. So um, thank God Commissioner Barbara Jordan, um, you know, really inspired me and, and kind of donated to our business. And what we're doing is we're doing a summer band camp. Wow. Um, we're also doing theater, acting, vocal workshops, summer series. So there's a lot going on. We just want to make sure that other kids, you know, get the opportunity. And Jaden, life really is about exposure. What do you say to other young people who may have had hoop dreams like you that there is another world out there? I, I would assume you would tell them. Uh, that their dream might be sports, but you have to look at other things to do in life instead of just sports. So we can show that black kids are amazing and special. That's right. Wow. Oh. He said it. Kids All right. are so special. So many gifts. Jaden, a.k.a. Will Smith, thank yes. you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you. And uh, the superintendent likes to say you made the impossible possible. He, he, that's one of his favorite lines. So thank you so much Absolutely. for being a part of this tonight. Tanisha, Jaden, Sharif, thank you so thank much. You thank Thanks you. for being here. Thank you. Well, coming up next, uh, she dealt with the worst kind of tragedy, but now she is bringing positive change to our world. We are going to sit down with Sabrina Fulton, the mother of Trayvon Martin, how Trayvon's death became a catalyst for a movement. We are coming right back after this very quick break from Miami, New Orleans, 
Senior High School in from the one and only Miami Garden. This local 10 special is sponsored by Vera Cadillac Buick GMC Pembroke Pines. Hi, I'm Shannon Briggs, two-time heavyweight champion of the world. And for over 10 years, I've been buying cars from Vera. From sales to service, they treat you just like family. Come down and experience the Vera difference. Let's go, champ! Let's go, champ! Shannon Briggs said it best. And now Vera Motors is offering up to $10,000 off. That's $10,000 off on select vehicles at Vera Motors. Come in and purchase any vehicle from Vera Motors and get an autographed boxing glove by Shannon Briggs. Come to Vera Motors in Pembroke Pines, four miles north of Hard Rock Stadium on 27th Avenue. City Furniture's Memorial Day sale has just been extended through Monday. Right now, this power reclining sectional is just $19.99. This complete queen bedroom, $7.99. This five-piece dining set, $4.99. This queen mattress set, $4.99. Plus, get same-day delivery and no interest for 60 months through Monday at City Furniture. When you live and work here, reliability is more than just a job. At FPL, it's what drives us. In good weather and bad, we're out there for you to make sure that inside your home, it's just another Saturday night. This 4th of July, Mikasuki Resort and Gaming invites you and your family to the Freedom Festival. A fun day filled with free carnival rides, water slides, airboat rides, and alligator wrestling from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Come enjoy South Florida's best 4th of July party. Visit Mikasuki.com. A South Florida city. This happened like a thief in the night. Nobody said anything. Bulldozing their way in. We're dealing with human lives. You don't just take a bulldozer and push them out. While booting the homeless out. Don't you think it was a little inhumane? Was it an inside job? Bob Norman investigates tonight at 11. Kelvin Hughes, reporting history as it happens. First TV station to broadcast live from the American Embassy. Traveling to any location, the moment news breaks. That standoff took place inside that nightclub. Turn to Local 10's Kelvin Hughes on the one and only Local 10 News. Welcome back, everyone, to our My Future, My Choice Town Hall. Here at Miami New Orleans Senior High School, we're joined by hundreds of people, and we're also joined by a very special person tonight. She made history not long ago, just weeks ago, being the first female police chief in Miami Gardens, Delma Noel Pratt. Chief, Thank welcome. you for joining us. Yes. Chief, what is your main message coming in as chief? Just building a partnership with the community and gaining that trust with them, working with them to solve this issue that we have. And you never probably dreamed that you were gonna be a trailblazer. What do you say to other young ladies and other young men out there who have dreams like yours? That anything is possible, just follow your goals and just have your objectives in line and you can do anything that you want to do. And I want you to notice, she's tiny. Look at me, I'm, I'm five, five oh, and a half. I, I wouldn't mess with her, though. Tiny, but mighty, so don't, don't mess, mess with her. her. <laughs> Congratulations, you're wonderful. Thank That's you. Right. And tonight, we also have some very special guests, Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin. They overcame the worst kind of tragedy for a parent. Of course, the death of their son, 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. It's hard to believe it's only been five years ago that Trayvon was killed near his father's home in Sanford. And uh, his death has really sparked a national movement, a very positive one. Here's Local 10's Glenda Milberg. In a different world, Trayvon Martin would be walking with this graduating class. His mom and dad accepted the honorary bachelor's diploma in his name last month, forever grieving parents who channeled heartbreak into a foundation as Trayvon's legacy. We're just looking for a better outcome, looking at uh, the world to view us as equal uh, as everybody else. February marked five years since that rainy night in Sanford and then 17-year-old Trayvon's fatal encounter with the armed community crime watch patrol who was suspicious of the teen he didn't know. We're talking about eyewitnesses who saw and heard this going on. Trayvon's shooting death initially made no headlines, no arrest. Police too ready to believe George Zimmerman's claims of self-defense. It was a full month after his death that Trayvon Martin, the young man, became Trayvon Martin, the movement. And we were in Sanford to document that. 
Trayvon is my son. Trayvon is your son. Trayvon Martin became the son of some 10,000 people in that field, the son of every person who has felt injustice, a system rigged against them, and a symbol for a new fight to make it right. You are our strength. You guys are what keep us going. Fueled by national civil rights activists and worldwide social media, masses of students staged protest walkouts for Trayvon. The Miami Heat donned the hoodies like Trayvon was wearing the night he was shot. That likeness is now a logo. No justice, no peace. And the movement moved the process. Sanford's police chief stepped aside. The local state prosecutor on the case was replaced. Five years later, his parents' foundation in his name continues to work to right injustice. Joining us now, the mother of Trayvon Martin, Sabrina Fulton. She has started a nationwide conversation. Trayvon's parents together, I mean, they've just been doing everything they can to prevent future tragedies, and it's all about justice. Yeah, they are committed to justice, and as you just heard, too, on behalf of their son, Trayvon's parents accepted a posthumous degree from Florida Memorial University from right here in Miami Gardens. Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina Fulton, is right here with us. Welcome, Sabrina. Thank you for being here. This is your alma mater. What yes. do you think of this new place? <laughs> I, I love it. I mean, I wish I was a part of this new school, <laughs> but I'm from the old school, so yeah. You are homegrown, though. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I um, graduated in 1984 from wow. right here, Miami, New Orleans. I'm wow. a Viking for life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Vikings right. in the house, okay. That's right. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Sabrina, um, you posted something on your Facebook page uh, just hours ago, and it was uh, an upside down American flag, and it read, One nation under God, indivisible, justice for some. Why'd you do it? Um, because a lot of times when people um, have the flag upside down, um, some people view it as a sign of disrespect. But I posted it because I want people to know that this country is in duress. And it's extremely important that we cover this country in prayer. We have to make some positive changes so that our young people can become adults, so they can at least grow up. Um, when I was little and I was young and growing up here in Miami, I didn't have a care in the world. And now our young people have to be concerned with being shot and killed. And so I don't want that to discourage them. I want them to know that they have a chance and I want them to have hope. Sabrina, you are out there so much with your face and your emotions. You're out there supporting other moms and parents who've lost kids. In your new book, Rest in Power, that you wrote with, your, with Trayvon's dad, you talk about the dark days, I mean dark days, that only other parents who've lost kids can relate to. Tell us about that a little bit. Um, one of the things is that when people saw me on t television and doing interviews and at rallies and things, they saw the Sabrina, they saw Trayvon Martin's mother and Javaris's mother that was sitting up straight, that was not crying, that was not, I didn't appear as though I was broken, although I was broken. Um, you, you saw the strong part of me. You didn't see the weak part of me. And that's one of the things that I talk about when I speak is my broken pieces, my, my darkest hour. Um, no parent wants to receive that telephone call. And so when I did get the call, I was on the floor. I was on the floor. I, I wasn't the strong person that you saw on, on television. That wasn't me. Um, I only did that out of the love that I had for my son because I knew that I needed to get the word out and that if I did not get the word out that this would be swept under the, the, the rug just like any other murder. It, it would be just considered like another tragic incident and I didn't want that to happen. And it's been five years, but does it still seem like yesterday? Absolutely. You miss it, it. It feels like I'm missing something very valuable. It feels like I'm missing an arm, a leg. It feels like something is missing out of my life. Um, 
I had two boys, I raised two boys, and just to go through life missing one of those boys, it's just continuously to, to feel like something is missing. You write in the book that you couldn't even leave a dark room for weeks. What was that time in your life like? That was my darkest hour. That was the, the period that you didn't see. That's before I started coming out speaking publicly. Um, I didn't want to comb my hair. I didn't want to take a shower. I didn't want to brush my teeth. It was that bad. I was on the floor in tears because I felt like it, it, it was nothing else to live for. Like when you lose a family member, it hurts. And I've lost family members, but to lose a child is a different type of hurt. And, and I'm sure the moms, anybody's mother understand what I'm saying because it's a certain connection that you have with your children. And it's a certain um, life expectancy that our kids are supposed to bury us. We are never supposed to bury our children. Yes. Now you, you, have, you have traveled the country uh, to promote your new book. Uh, at book tours, and I'm sure other moms who have lost their children to gun violence have come up to you and talked with you. Speaking of connection, how big of a connection that you did not expect to make all across the country as you traveled and you saw so many moms who have lost their children to gun violence? Um, I'm a part of those moms, and those moms are a part of me. And so it doesn't strike me as being unusual. I just feel like I'm doing what anybody else's mother would have done for their child. And so I don't think I'm this super person. I'm just an average person, just an average mom who decided to stand up when my son was shot down. And so I don't feel like I'm doing something that's extraordinary. I just feel like this is the norm. Like, as women, we do what we have to do. And so I'm doing what I have to do for my son. And now you're going to take it to the next level. You're talking about running for political office? Oh, well, that was a question that came up. And yes, I'm considering running for office. That's one of the things that I am considering. Do you think you can really, I mean, people say politics is a lot of gridlock. I mean, do you think you can really make a difference and you can fight this justice system that you want to change? I can do my best. The only thing I can do is try. And I'm not afraid to try. You know, you know, there is uh, one, of my, one of my favorite sayings is, uh, you don't choose to make history, history chooses you. Do you feel like uh, you were chosen for this particular purpose? And, or would you rather just go back to being Sabrina I and Miami Gardens, would the Viking? Rather, yeah. um, I always say that people in the military are very brave um, and that they signed up to fight. They signed up to possibly lose their life. Um, I would not have sacrificed my son. Even if it was to save one other child, I would not have sacrificed my son. And so that's in all honesty. You know, if I can take back this whole thing, I absolutely positively would, but I can't. So what I have to do is make the best of what I'm going through. Okay. I have to make the best of my life now. I have to understand that that is a definitely, that's a chapter in my life that happened. If you wrote about Sabrina Fulton, there would be a chapter in there that says that I lost my son. Yes. Now, what I'm doing now is showing people what I did after that chapter. Writing my down. next chapter, what did I do? That's right, that's right. Sabrina Fulton, thank you. You might be the strongest Viking in the family. <laughs> and I think that they all would agree with That's me. Right. Absolutely. Thank you, Sabrina. We really appreciate you. We really appreciate you. And your husband, Tra well, your ex-husband, Tracy, we wanted to come here. You forgot he's to not ask about my orange. Yeah, yes. he's not oh, yeah, that's right, for National uh, uh, Gun, gun Violence, violence Awareness. Gun Violence Awareness. The awareness orange is for National Gun Violence Awareness. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so very much. It. And Thank we'll be you. wearing a lot of orange this week and in honor of you. Thank, Thank you, you for being here, Thank Sabrina. You. Thank you. We do want all of you at home to join this conversation. We don't want it one-sided. We want you to be a part of that. So do join the discussion with the hashtag MFMC for my future, my choice. Let us know your comments and questions and know that we are listening. Up next, we take a look at the remarkable programs that are helping to change the lives of children in our community. Yes, and one of those programs is using music to reach the kids. Instead of putting a gun in someone's hand, it's a guitar. So don't miss it. We're going to take a quick break and be right back here at Miami Norland Senior High.
I'm Evander the Real Deal Holyfield. And Barrow is the real deal. They are genuine, straightforward in their service department. It's unmatched by any other dealership. Come and experience it for yourself. Evander Holyfield said it best, and now Vera Motors is offering up to $10,000 off. That's $10,000 off on select vehicles at Vera Motors. Also, come in and purchase any vehicle from Vera Motors and get an autographed boxing glove by Evander Holyfield. Come to Vera Motors in Pembroke Pines, four miles north of Hard Rock Stadium on 27th Avenue. For 75 years, we've been caring for people of all ages, cultures, and faiths, assisting those in need, inspiring others. Miami Jewish Health Systems, an innovative leader in healthcare, here to serve any and everyone, promoting longer, healthier, more enriched lives. Go to MiamiJewishHealthSystems.org to learn more. Miami Jewish Health Systems at Douglas Gardens, enriching lives. Tired of working a low-level job and not having enough money to pay your bills? Then you know it's time for a change. Let Miami-Dade Technical Colleges help take you to the next level. With seven technical colleges in Miami-Dade County, we can prepare you for the jobs in demand, like automotive service technology, cosmetology, culinary arts, and more. Our quality of training is evident in the thousands we've helped prepare for the workforce. The best part is our graduates won't have to repay large loans. Call 305-558-8000 or click careerinayear.com. Brought to you by Miami-Dade County Public Schools. A South Florida city. This happened like a thief in the night. Nobody said anything. Bulldozing their way in. We're dealing with human lives. You don't just take a bulldozer and push them out. While booting the homeless out. Don't you think it was a little inhumane? Was it an inside job? Bob Norman investigates tonight at 11. Lori Jennings taking you to the heart of the story. Reporting from just outside Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Traveling to wherever breaking news happens. Good evening from Johannesburg, South Africa. Turn to Local 10's Lori Jennings on the one and only Local 10 News. Welcome back, everyone, to our My Future, My Choice live town hall. Yeah, a lively crowd here at yes. Miami New Orleans yes. Senior High School. What a great group of people. You know, we talked about programs that we're going to introduce you to. We have one, if we can show you the video here. Everyday neighbors are really making incredible strides to make our community safer and better. And now we want to share with you this amazing project. A group of volunteers cleaned up an abandoned historic cemetery. It's called Lincoln Memorial Park. It is the final resting place of prominent African Americans in South Florida. And volunteers worked on everything from pulling weeds to painting graves. And we want to recognize the organizers of this great program. They are right here live with us tonight if they'll stand up Dwight Wells and Sharif Earp who you met earlier let's give them a round of yeah, applause and a couple of other guys right efforts. here too with them as well yes all of them you guys you guys are awesome you've been busy so many people in our community are doing so many good things all around us tonight we want to specifically honor some of the mentors out there because yeah. all it takes is one person to make a difference in a child's life here are some of the other programs that are transforming our youth into successful young adults. Here is Eric Yatsi with that report. Among the handshakes and hugs, the smiles, the standing ovations in this hall are the stories of hope from these women of tomorrow. I feel amazing, 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 amazing. I'm so appreciative. These are the feelings that the Women of Tomorrow program is creating. They are in every public school in Miami-Dade, Broward and Palm Beach counties. Every month, Thousands of at-risk high school girls are mentored by accomplished women like our own Nikki Mohan. Kavita Devaji. Building their self-esteem and believing in them. Confidence, um, new friends, um, people I can rely on. I used to get frustrated when things used to not go right, so I used to like just give up, but they taught me not to give up. The importance of education one of the heartbeats of the program. Our $250 plan and they don't have a scholarship. In these red folders, college scholarship money. They have given more than $5 million in scholarships in the 19 years they've been investing in young women in South Florida. That noise is opportunity, and this is the Guitars Over Guns program. They partner professional musicians with students in Miami who have never touched instruments before and give them a chance to choose their sound. Dr. Chad Bernstein has toured the globe playing the trombone and realized music can make a world of difference to kids in South Florida. Watching these kids that had never picked up an instrument at the beginning of the year come on stage and come alive and kids that wouldn't talk to other kids or were super shy and have them break out of their shell, it's just a really amazing experience. 
adding rock and rap to reading, writing, and arithmetic. Guitars Over Guns is in nine Miami public schools and growing. In these jam sessions, Bernstein sees kids who are emerging leaders because they are overcoming difficult home situations. Success in this program looks like a confident kid walking out and owning the fact that they have the power to make choices in their life. A high bar, but the results are music to our ears. We have some very special guests with us now who are part of those inspiring programs. First off, next to us, our own Nikki Mohan. You know the face. face. Yeah. When Nikki's not doing television <laughs> in all her free time, she is out there mentoring so many young women as part of Women of Tomorrow. And such a great mother, too. We also have uh, Natalie Moore, a mentee of Women of Tomorrow. Very pretty. Dr. Chad Bernstein is the president and CEO of Guitars Over Guns. And Xavier Gustav, who is a student musician himself. and. Nice to have you all with us. Thanks for joining us. Chad, we've heard guitars over guns. It's called Go Go. <laughs> what is the magic of this program? When did you start it? Tell us about it. For us, the magic of the program really is in the transformational power of music and the incredible musicians that we have in our community that come back and mentor our youth. So we use music and a non traditional approach, popular music, hip hop, to engage the kids in the things that they're most interested in, keep them after school in a productive space safe place where they can be themselves and just be kids, which is so important for so many of our youth. Right. Um, and then pair them with somebody that's going to stay with them for a year and mentor them and teach them the life skills and the things that really are going to make the difference in their life for their ability to set goals, redefine what success means to them, and then have the, the skills to acquire those things. And uh, we started actually right down the road, 10 minutes away at North Miami Middle School with 15 kids and five mentors. And the program's grown to serve over 2,000 youth. Wow. And uh, this year alone, we have 600. Um, and 41 professional musicians between here and Chicago that are uh, invested into the lives of our kids. So it's, it's a great honor um, to, to be working in this space and with so many people that are committed towards making a difference and to be able to unlock the incredible potential of yeah. our youth. And great talent like Xavier. You spoke of hip hop. Uh, we got a rapper on, on the end right there with Xavier. Uh, how has this program transformed your life, Xavier? It's really helped me get in touch with my more musical and more talented side and it's also helped me see things in a more different moral way you know just set up my way of thinking into a better mindset than any other kid would you know just setting me apart differently from anyone else basically so that's xavier you don't have to play guitar that's just the name guitars over guns but you can be a rapper you can be a singer you can play what drums piano yep you can play practically any instrument you want if you have a talent Gogo -Go is the place because the way that we see it, it's almost like a family. I mean, you're in this program for a long time with the same mentors and the same faces. Eventually, you're going to make friends, and eventually, those friends are going to start coming over to your houses or coming over to performance with you, carpooling, whatever. And in the end, we all just happen to have a deep connection because we all accept and appreciate one another. It doesn't matter what your background is, it doesn't matter what you're interested in. We all see you as, you know, our brother, our sister, our second mom, our second dad, you That's know? That's right. And Chad, for you, uh, how much raw talent have you seen out there since you've been over this program? We asked Tanisha about that with her drama program. How much raw talent have you seen? It's incredible. I mean, we have students that have never picked up an instrument before the program. And this year, uh, we have two students that just accepted scholarships to Berkeley School of Music. So wow. it's unlocking doors wow. in their lives. In, wow. In, in ways that, um, you know, music is, is obviously the, the tool, yes. but it's the bridge. It's not necessarily the end goal. Um, and what we're really trying to do is transfer, transform our students' potential. And wow. to see it it's flourish working. in that way is incredible. Oh, yeah. It's working. And our other program is Women of Tomorrow. Nikki, yeah. tell us about it, because you've been involved for years now. Yes, for almost the entire length of the program. It's been around for 20 years wow. in all Miami-Dade public schools, Broward, Palm Beach, also now in greater Detroit and Philadelphia. Women Helping Women, a woman mentor put in every public high school um, to encourage at what we consider at-risk girls who are referred to the program or who join the program, to encourage them to go to college, to build proper relationships, um, and then we give them college scholarships over five million dollars awarded in scholarships in the almost two decades and this is one of our scholarship winners and, Natalie Mora and Natalie who was your mentor and how did she change your life um, Bernita and Karen and we also had the school coordinator who was Miss Lachlan at the time um, and yeah I mean women of tomorrow in general it just it changes lives. how does it change your life though? well I was in a really bad situation I had started high school um, 
well, it was my brother. He had a lot of drug problems, and he brought it home very often. My parents wanted to get a divorce because my mom was always trying to protect my brother. And um, I didn't really care about school. I would skip school and, and show up two weeks later to class and be like, oh, when did the tables change? Wow. Um, and I one day was walking with one of my friends and there was cupcakes and cookies and chips and there was just so much food in the library where they were having their first meeting. And I walked in and I sat down and I started eating a cookie and they started talking about scholarships. So um, at that time I was in a really bad situation and I thought, oh, I'm not going to college. Um, I'm not really gonna end up doing anything. I'm just gonna stay at home, probably be like my brother or something. Um, and when they spoke about the scholarship, I got really interested and my ears perked up. And that's when I started talking to the school coordinators and, and I started talking to the mentors and they really started getting me involved. They started bringing in um, guest speakers, how to do a job interview, how to look someone in the eye and shake their hand the proper way. And what has it led to? What's your future goal? Oh, now I, my goal is to be a veterinarian. Great. Yes. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm actually interning right now. And this is my last semester at Miami Dade College. Wow. And I'm going to be doing the, going to FIU to do the pre-vet program there. Wow. And Xavier, before we leave, what is your goal? What is your goal? What's your future hold? My future, it's just to be great, to be honest. I want to own my own studio someday. And I don't want it to only focus on music. I want it to be an entertainment studio where if you have a talent for art, if you have a talent for ventriloquism, puppets. Yes, <laughs> we understand. Yeah. <laughs> then you will do it. Then you will do it. Yes. You know, it's just the place where you show your talent no matter if it's with your hands or with your arms, with your voice, you know. I just want a place where we give to the world what we have been given and we just show off what we can. And these mentors awesome. made a difference. Yes. Chad, we know you're going to be behind Xavier and Nikki. You're going to be behind Natalie and others through Women of Tomorrow. Guitars over guns. Thank you all. Thank you. All it takes is one great mentor. That's right. And Natalie, you made Dr. Padrone a very happy man tonight <laughs> and the superintendent as well after hearing that you would skip school uh, you know, in two weeks. <laughs> he was over there wondering what's going on. All right. Well, a display of hope after tragedy. Little King Carter was only six years old when he lost his life to violence. Coming up, how he's being remembered on the football field, a sport that he loves so much. Please stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. This Local 10 special is sponsored by Vera Cadillac Buick GMC Pembroke Pines. Hi, I'm Shannon Briggs, two-time heavyweight champion of the world. And for over 10 years, I've been buying cars from Vera. From sales to service, they treat you just like family. Come down and experience the Vera difference. Let's go, champ! Let's go, champ! Shannon Briggs said it best. And now Vera Motors is offering up to $10,000 off. That's $10,000 off on select vehicles at Vera Motors. Come in and purchase any vehicle from Vera Motors and get an autographed boxing glove by Shannon Briggs. Come to Vera Motors in Pembroke Pines, four miles north of Hard Rock Stadium on 27th Avenue. This 4th of July, Miccosukee Resort and Gaming invites you and your family to the Freedom Festival. A fun day filled with free carnival rides, water slides, airboat rides, and alligator wrestling from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Come enjoy South Florida's best 4th of July party. Visit Miccosukee.com. It is very difficult to get into a cardiovascular ICU. I think this is a testament to the quality of education provided by Kaiser University to even be considered uh, for this position as a recent graduate. The hands-on learning definitely has helped me in my real-world practice. My name is Daniel Hargrove. I'm currently a registered nurse at one of the largest hospitals in Florida. I was able to get into this position because of Kaiser University. When you get caught in a storm, know that we're out there too, keeping our eye on the big picture. So in the unlikely event your lights go out at home, we'll let you know with the new FPL outage alert. Go to the new FPL.com slash alerts to start getting notified your way. South Florida, Local 10 News is your weather authority. Showers will be steered in our direction. Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis, the authority on weather. We see two areas of stormy weather. Holding the highest credentials for a broadcast meteorologist. Connected to our community. Dedicated to keeping you safe. Committed to getting it right. South Florida's Chief Certified Meteorologist Betty Davis and your weather authority team on the one and only Local 10 News.
And welcome back, everyone, to My Future, My Choice, our local ten town hall meeting here at Miami New Orleans Senior High School. We are here at this beautiful school, a brand new building where the kids are involved in so many magnet programs. It is great to see. I can only think back to our first town hall meeting, and we were talking about a story that really touched so many. Little King Carter was only six years old when he was caught in the crossfire more than a year ago, but his spirit is still very much alive among the Liberty City Warriors football team, wearing here their yellow and black jerseys that bear King's name. These kids are honoring King, a defensive lineman who loved football. Here's King Carter's father, Santonio Carter, taking in the emotion. They just keeping the name King Carter alive, keeping arithmetic, staying in shape, staying in balance, and staying focused. But education is first. They're doing their schoolwork. They're getting A's and B's and rewarding them out here on the field. The mission is this, for them to prosper, them to stay out of trouble, for them to get good grades in school and potentially be NFL superstars one day. Let's have all the Liberty City Warriors here stand up for yeah, us. Yeah, show your you. pride. Show your pride. There you go. You guys are looking really good with those uniforms on. I would say bad and bougie, but just bad, huh? You guys are bad to the bone. There you go. Not bad and bougie. And we have a very <laughs> special treat for you tonight as well. Precious Simonette, the creative writing teacher at Miami Norland, right here. Right she next to you. She is so yeah. impressive. Yeah. Please stand. Here you go. She has also been named the 2017 Miami-Dade Public Schools Teacher of the Year. Oh, yes. Another proud moment for the superintendent. Absolutely. That's right. Simonette touches the lives of so many young people, and she has helped them find their voice, and tonight she's going to do exactly that. So, Simonette, the Teacher of the Year, as long as we can say that for the next <laughs> several months, take it away. Thank you. Hi. So, the Viking Freedom Writers Creative Writing Club started in Miami Lord and Senior High School four years ago as a vehicle to inspire my students to use their voices to make a change in their communities and to inspire more students to turn away from gangs, guns, negativity, basically to tell their stories. Tonight, it gives me the honor to welcome you to see the Viking Freedom Riders. Thank you. It's our lives and our choices. We make a decision to pick it up or drop it. The choice is yours. You have to decide whether or not to stop it. I miss her. Thinking of my brother's death every day and raised up by trigger happy fools, leaving families sad and broken. See, I've always been a homebody. Listening, Listening to gunshots, gunshots outside of my window, hoping to avoid a home invasion. Bullets, bullets don't have a navigation, navigation and won't hesitate to reroute inside of my body. See, what if I told you that guns had vision and in the blink of a barreled eye, a, a nearsighted, nearsighted death is closer, closer than it appears? It's hosted a He's hosted 30 teeth inside of a clip, allergic, allergic to life, life, sneezing from a snub nose that can sadly bless you with bullets, making you wonder why someone would pull it. Hearing his life is driving me insane because he chose the wrong lane. Leaving myself permanently parked in a cemetery. When my brother died. The only thing on my mind was retaliation. Drowning in the pool of your own anger. I held that gun in my hand, facing the realization that, that shootings are not stem from, from a lack of gun control, control but, but the controlling of a mindset that, that is cultured with homicidal thoughts. Raised in rage and trained to aim. It's our lives and our choices. We made the decision to pick it up or drop it. The choice is yours. You have to decide whether or not to stop it. Thank you. South Florida City. This happened like a thief in the night. Nobody said anything. Bulldozing their way in. We're dealing with human lives. You don't just take a bulldozer and push them out. While booting the homeless out. Don't you think it was a little inhumane? Was it an inside job? Bob Norman investigates tonight at 11. Julie Durda, Local 10 Morning News Weather Authority. Julie's forecast is trusted locally and across the nation. An accurate forecast from a trusted sealed meteorologist. Julie Durda and Local 10 Morning News. Your weather authority. City Furniture's Memorial Day sale has just been extended through Monday. Right now, this leather reclining sofa is just $9.99. This queen bedroom set, $14.99. This five-piece dining set, $5.99. This king mattress set, $11.99. Plus, get same-day delivery and no interest for 60 months through Monday at City Furniture. 
Tired of working a low-level job and not having enough money to pay your bills? Then you know it's time for a change. Let Miami-Dade Technical Colleges help take you to the next level. With seven technical colleges in Miami-Dade County, we can prepare you for the jobs in demand, like licensed practical nurse, dental assistant, pharmacy technician, and more. Our quality of training is evident in the thousands we've helped prepare for the workforce. The best part is our graduates won't have to repay large loans. Call 305-558-8000 or click careerinayear.com. Brought to you by Miami-Dade County Public Schools. I'm Evander The Real Deal Holyfield, and Vera is The Real Deal. They are genuine, straightforward, and their service department is unmatched by any other dealership. Come and experience it for yourself. Evander Holyfield said it best, and now Vera Motors is offering up to $10,000 off. That's $10,000 off on select vehicles at Vera Motors. Also, come in and purchase any vehicle from Vera Motors and get an autographed boxing glove by Evander Holyfield. Come to Vera Motors in Pembroke Pines, four miles north of Hard Rock Stadium on 27th Avenue. This local 10 special is sponsored by Vera Cadillac Buick GMC Pembroke Pines. Welcome back, everyone, to My Future, My Choice here in Miami, New Orleans Senior High School. A great building. Yes. Oh, my gosh. What a great venue. It is. Tonight we stand in this brand new building, but it wasn't always like this. We want to take you back to what it used to look like when students roamed the halls starting in 1958. School staff, they really wanted to give students here in Miami Gardens a better environment to learn. And thanks to Miami-Dade voters, a lot of money was allocated to give Aging Norland, a big makeover. Yeah, try about $43 million. Uh, this is what Norland looks like now. The multi-million dollar facility includes the new auditorium. We're standing in tonight. Classrooms decked out with state-of-the-art technology. And the school has facilities for music, dance, and art programs for the students here, the Vikings. On the stage right now to entertain us as we wrap up tonight is Rudy LaFrance. He is from Guitars Over Guns. He is going to begin his playing. Rudy, thank you. And of course, we have to give away something. You know, tonight, yes. as part of our My Future, My Choice drive, we are handing out books to every child in the audience. I think that deserves a little something, something from the audience. <laughs> and helping us tonight is the one and only superintendent of Miami Dade Public Schools, Alberto Carvalho. Alberto, please this year, local gym will give out 100,000 books to kids in South yes. Florida. Thank you yes. for joining us. Alberto. I know a lot of folks are applauding right now, but what is your reaction to tonight and the, the successes that have been made so far? It's impressive. You know, my future, my choice, I think what it really means is, uh, you know, their future, their choice, but their choices are better when we make the right choices for them. So we heard about Guitars Over Guns. We heard about King Carter Academies, uh, Women of Tomorrow, and so many other programs that really elevate the quality of programming for kids, keep them entertained, keep them engaged, in positive activities, and trust me, negativity will not be able to recruit them. Superintendent, uh, how proud of you are, uh, are are you of this school, of Little Jaden, of the movie Moonlight being done right here in Miami? How does that make you feel? I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> For those who doubt that uh, there isn't great talent in the urban core right here in Miami, watch Moonlight, watch Jaden, watch the magic that Tanisha Seidel brings to the stage and her classroom every single day. You know, speak with uh, board member Steve Gallon III, the product of this community, who's become a successful leader right here in our community. Coming to our schools and observe the magic of teaching, the arts, the music programs. That's why we continue to invest in choice, additional academies that captivate kids' interests. That's why we need the community to continue to come together for children bringing after-school programs, programs on the weekends, athletic programs, arts programs, to keep them engaged. Together, we can make sense. Miami Norland is one of your crown jewels, but academically, how are they doing? Uh, Norland is doing very well. I mean, this was one school about nine years ago, it was a felling school, graduation rates around 50%. Today, Norland Senior High School boasts of one of the highest graduation rates anywhere in the state, wow. about 80%. Is it? Yeah, it's, the 80, it's a B school, right? 86%, yeah, right? Yeah. It surpasses the state average, surpasses the district average. This is a success story. It takes leadership, great teaching, and great community support. All right. Uh, Steve, can you join us here from Miami? Yes, yes. Miami Garden. Yeah, we're going to give away some books, Lori. Yes, yes Would absolutely. you both help us? Stand yes. to our left. Would you, if you would both help, and the 5,000 role models are going to help guide the children so everyone can get a book. Yes. All right, and we want to let you know that for the adults, we have a special surprise. 
If you look in your program right now, adults only, oh, yeah. look in your program. If you have a little star, you're going to walk home with one of these 20 <laughs> Rest in Power books. Look on the program. Written That's by Sabrina say, Fulton, yes, the yes. mother of Trayvon Martin. Rest in Power. 20 of these books. So look at your programs right now. And if you have a star, a little star sticker, yes, I see them. You're raising. Come on up. Come up, and we will. Calvin and I will hand them out to you. Yeah, and the 5,000 role models are helping us out. A program founded by... Um, Frederica Wilson, of course, you guys come on up, help us out, give out some books, and we're going to start the whole process of giving out books, and Local 10 is giving away 100,000 books this year. What an awesome, awesome uh, project that we've taken on. And these are serious books. We're talking about 500-page, hardbound books. Yes. The kids are going to love them. And thank you to Sabrina Fulton for giving us 20 of her books, Rest in Power, and we wish so much luck to Women of Tomorrow, Guitars Over Guns, so many great programs out there. And we want to let the folks at home know that you can join the movement by visiting local10.com and making a donation through the link provided there. The funds raised will be used to buy books and get them into the hands of kids who need them most. We really thank you in advance for making such a big difference in our community. Thank you to all of our panelists tonight, to the superintendent for hosting us in Miami Norland Senior High School, right here in the heart of Miami Gardens. We all feel inspired, yeah. and we are going to bring you more highlights tonight on Local 10 News at 11. And I also think we have to give it up for uh, Wesley as well. Did, didn't he do oh, a good job yes. off the top he of the program? Singing. He was so awesome. He really did he set the great. tone. He and that's great. really what we wanted to accomplished tonight and that is the fact that we want to create change in this community and from these town hall meetings or conversations we want to begin the discussion of people creating change in their community one mentor at a time one mentee at a time and one book at a time you know so many kids have don't even have a book at home to read but they will now they will now thanks to all of you a hundred thousand books going out to our community now, don't forget to go to Twitter, and uh, if we're trending there, send us uh, your comments, of course. We'll try to include some of those on our newscast tonight at 11 o'clock. And speaking of that, we're going to have to go back to the studio and do we that. We are. <laughs> we will see you there tonight at 11. Thank you for continuing the conversation with us. Our third town hall, and there will be more. Yes, this is our third town hall meeting, and uh, once again, the conversation is about change. We hope to see you tonight on Local 10 News at 11 o'clock. For Lori Jennings, I'm Calvin Hughes. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everyone.